I've always been interested in food, but what got me interested uh, a lot was the products in the industry and um, talking to my chef friends and they would tell me things um, that they believed about their equipment that I thought, wow, that's not engineering or science, but it seems to work. So that got my brain ticking over because I've always liked the, uh, the real science, the real physics and getting back to um, first principles with um, engineering. So um, I started to look more carefully at things like knives and cookware. They showed me their knives and the brands and said these are the best European brands, you know. And I looked at them and to me they were engineering dinosaurs. They'd been that way for 800 years from the time that the, um, the sword makers first started to make dedicated cook's knives. And so when I just tackled it from first principles and said, hey, we've got to get rid of the rivets, we've got to get rid of the plastic, the wood, make it one piece. But the prototypes work and then the chefs loved it and it took off. All the products I've designed, uh, I think of them like that from first principles. Way back when I was talking to the chefs about their knives, they were also at the same time saying, hey, you've developed a one piece seamless knife and that's great. Uh, can you do the same for cookware? Because look at these pans, we've got these rivets and, and the food gets stuck around the rivet heads and the, the rivets get uh, loose and the handles get wobbly, eventually they fail. I said, that's a brilliant idea. But as a mechanical engineer, um, I knew it wasn't easy. And to production make a seamless one piece pan from wrought sheath had never been done. The more I talked to the experts in manufacturing, the more they would tell me it's impossible, you can't do that. You can imagine if we start with a flat sheet of steel, to work that steel into that much depth, and at the same time have that shape connected to the handle shape, that's the difficulty. There's so much force and stresses involved in this area that it just tears apart. So they just said, well, okay, we can easily make the uh, body, and then we'll rivet or weld or screw on a handle. I found a way to uh, work the body of the pan into that shape with the handle attached and then work the handle into its final shape, all from the same flat sheet of material. It's pretty obvious to people who know these materials that if you make a one piece pan out of this material, it's easily going to do a century and, and who knows, you know, with a little bit of care, it could be a thousand years. You know, life is short. What can we say? I've always had that feeling since I've been a kid and it's been one of the motivators for me to really experience life and to get out there and give everything 100%. But uh, for me, a way to extend our own lives is legacy. Partially we can do that through products. Then when it's to do with food and, and nurturing and nourishing a family, and it's also an heirloom product, I think that's something extra special that's moves beyond just a metal object. In Australia, there's um, say 8 million kitchens. 90% uh, of those would have synthetic coated non-stick pans that last, if we're really generous, they might last five years, right? <laughs> Often a lot less. If you do the math, that turns out to be nearly one and a half million pans thrown in our landfill every year. We've got the solution for the people that are interested in less waste and interested in the next generation and the legacy we leave for them.